Eternice is a dating action role playing game, which is clearly my type of game because I too love anime waifus and mashing my buttons. Rest in peace my Joy-Cons. Thanks to Kepler Interactive for bravely sending me a review key so that I can roast this game to its very core. Allow me to bestow the information for you to think about getting this game because I am here to possibly save you from this flashy, weird experience that is Eternites. <laughs> Alright dudes and dudettes, the only dating game I've played is Persona, and we all know it's not a dating game. It's got some dating aspects, but it's mainly a JRPG first. Why am I talking about Persona? Well, the dev loved Persona so much that he was like, I too can make my own Persona. I would like to make some comparisons to Persona, but Atlas spends ages making their games. They have a budget and a big team to make it happen. Studio Sai on the other hand was first a solo dev and starting to grow their company. So I gotta chill and not compare this to the level of Persona. This is an indie dev we're talking about here, but I am an honest person and it's hard for me to lie for the amount of uh, fun stuff I had with the game. So what do we have going on here? In this futuristic world, a drug named Eternites promised to deliver anti-aging, but instead of doing that, it changes its mind and becomes the T-Virus. People start to transform into monsters and supernatural stuff happens. Before the world becomes weird, you start this game as this boy which you name as yourself with this awkward keyboard. Sadly, there's no option for being a girl. Missed opportunity there. Your chat of a friend, Chani, tells you to get on this dating app because it's time to put your riz to the test. And you're like, okay, bro, I got this. After doing the uh, interesting personality test, you get matched with a grill and promise to meet up with her the next day. As you make your way towards the date, this explosion happens and somehow the media instantly knows that a wall appeared. This guy transforms and you and your friend run towards a shelter that somehow the city prepared. After a couple of days in the bunker, your door mysteriously opens and you decide to leave. The shelter is somehow placed in the underground train station and you coincidentally bump into the super pop idol Yuna. Then you and this group walk around the shelter trying to find a way out. This girl dies, you bump into a drone telling you to get out of there by taking a train. This woman slices your arm for reasons. Then you meet this girl that you were meant to have a date with in a dream. She regens your arm and now you can fight the monsters and save the world. If you too think that the story is ridiculous, then don't worry. I too am in the same boat because my life is just as ridiculous as well. Remember the train they tell you to get on? Somehow this train has the ability to travel towards the mystical walls to get to the main objective that will save the world. I mean this is the future so who knows what kind of technology there is to instantly manufacture rail lines in the direction you're meant to be heading to. It looks like you're meant to travel almost halfway across the world to get to the main objective, but it's more like the next two cities. I think it's best to not think about the story, so uh, let's just get on with the main appeal of the game, which is dating. Along your journey to fight monsters that are uh, totally not broken, you come across potential partners to date. Yuna, as I said before, is a pop idol. She looks like she would hide in a corner for someone to save her, but her personality is stronger than that. Sia is the second girl you meet out of literally nowhere, and she is a scientist. She is confident in herself and is quite passionate about her profession. Min is the shy and awkward one of the group. She used to be with her running team until they got killed. Finally, we have Johan, the only guy you can romance and he comes in way too late in the game, making it hard for me to get his final rank because it's basically the end of the game and I didn't have enough courage to talk to him. Also, since you probably meet him near the end of the game, you don't really get to know him well enough and somehow you formed a strong enough connection to make out with him. Pacing in this game be wild. Speaking about courage, 
With each character interaction, there's a chance that you level up one out of four social stats. This chance depends on which choice you made between each interaction. Not every choice will increase your social stat, and this game totally needs an autoplay function because I'm not bothered to press X every time. There are some autoplay moments, but the majority of them don't have it. Depending on the level of either social stat, you can have a one-on-one -on -one session with one of the characters. If the stat isn't high enough, then you won't be able to talk to them. Although there was a time I got completely blocked off from talking to them for no reason. I think I was progressing the relationship too fast, so the dev made it that I couldn't go any further. This interaction system works fine because no matter what choice you choose, it will level up one of the four stats. I feel like you should have some sort of consequences for choosing a bad answer, but I guess it's good for people that have a fear of choosing the wrong decision. If only real life can be like that. By the way, this screen here is actually useless. I can't interact with any bit of it. It might as well be a PNG image. They should have at least let me hover over the items I scavenge for each character and give me some flavor text, but at this rate, I might as well go read some manga at this point. Also, I think the character stats shouldn't even be here, but maybe in a different menu. You can also do mini games with each of these characters. Doing these games will give you the currency to unlock abilities. There's a ranking system on how well you did in the game. If you reach the goal, you will receive the best rewards, as opposed to failing the goal. Depending on the relationship rank of the characters, you can use the currency to unlock those abilities. This seems fine, right? Wrong. I didn't even get enough currency to unlock the majority of the abilities by the time I completed the game. But what about New Game Plus? I'll talk about that later on. There's another way of obtaining that currency, and that's by scavenging items. Another mini game that involves finding an item that the character wants under a timer and in one of three locations. These items are not randomized, so if you remember that one of those locations has that specific item in there, then great. Otherwise, you just wasted your time and you got the worst reward. It also increases your stats, but it feels like the dev wanted to show me a positive number to increase my dopamine levels, meaning that it feels like it does absolutely nothing to the character. Now, do I even like these characters? Um, I do like Yuna because I feel like the dev mostly worked on her personality and since you basically start the game with her, you get to spend more time talking with her. Min is not too bad as well. Her awkwardness is somewhat relatable and I can understand some people might find themselves in the same situation as her. Sia is fine, a bit too passionate with science, but again, I can see some people being like this. Johan is at the end game and it felt like a random addition to the group and wasn't flushed out enough. As for the best friend in the group, which you call Romance, he is fine. Nothing really great about him other than adding humor to the game. This is just what I think and I do have to wonder about what other people think if they actually get this flashy game. Remember boys and girls, this is also an action role playing game. So it's time to take a look at the engaging gameplay. Hack and Slash is the other thing in the game and is very simple. Mash the attack button four times and you can perform a finisher doing big damage. Dodge an attack on time and you'll be invincible for a bit to reposition and do damage. Got some of that being out of witch time in here. Now that's if you can get the dodge timing right because I can just about do it. Although those projectiles are a great way to easily gain the advantage. After dealing enough combos, you can fill up this meter so that you can fist your enemies with that RGB gamer PC arm and perform cool executions. This fisting ability is very good at destroying enemies that have magical shields because monsters can do that somehow. Also, you can't destroy the shield without fisting them, which means that they are invincible with the shield. No wonder why humans died. These shields have elements to them and you have to use the right element to destroy them because otherwise the shield will survive like a Nokia 3310. When you meet up with the other characters, more abilities and elements are given to you. You can unlock these new abilities by using white or black essences. White essence can only be obtained by doing the mini games I told you about before and it can only be used on character specific abilities. Black Essence is gained from exploring the world, which is basically a maze, and you can defeat specific enemies that will magically give it to you. Black Essence is only used on your abilities, so you can change arm into a greatsword, 
or insta-kill your enemies. I finished the game with all my abilities unlocked and I think it's impossible to get everyone else's abilities fully unlocked by the time you complete the game. This is because you have a limited amount of time to rank up each character's relationship and get currency to gain those abilities. Also, the currency you gain is as small as the amount of subscribers I get on my channel. What do you mean by limited time, you ask? Well, just like Persona, there is a time period where if a certain amount of days has passed, the game will move on to the next stage. In between the time of completing the main objective, you chill in the futuristic train, and you can either have a one-on-one -on -one session, a minigame, or do the main mission. This will take out the day cycle of the game, and then you have the night cycle, where you can choose to scavenge, train, or go to your best friend to increase one of your social stats. After doing either of those, the day will end, moving on to the next day. You gotta choose your time wisely, or in my case, don't choose your time wisely because the game is quite short, so it doesn't matter and it's hard to connect with these characters in a short amount of time. Defeating monsters isn't the only thing you do in the main missions. As you run around the game's neon lit mazes, which are apparently those giant walls that appeared out of nowhere, there are puzzles that will block your path. These puzzles totally make sense with the world. One of the <clears throat> best puzzles I came across is this one where you walk on an invisible floor. This right here is your clue, which you might have to look at from a distance because you can't remember the arrow's colors and the clue they give you. But don't worry, because if you fail, there is no penalty other than walking back to a platform to do the puzzle again. Just like fighting the enemies in the game, there's basically no penalty for dying. The only thing is that you have to fight them again and you get the benefit of max health. I feel like you should be kept with the same amount of health you had at the last checkpoint so that you can back out. But thanks, I guess the teammates aren't only good at giving you elements, but you can also use their confident skills. These unlockable skills allow you to gain a shield, green ice, other stuff, and the most important thing in the game, healing. And it's the only way to heal yourself. Whenever you use a confident skill, it will eat up this meter. If this meter runs out, which the game doesn't tell you about, then you can't use any confidence skills. And you can only go back to the train to have it fully recharged. Or if you're like me, just continue and get good. The amount of times I used up the meter was ridiculous because you can heal yourself up to three times. I think the meter slightly recharges itself when you do attacks, but it's pretty useless. The better choice would be to back out of the main mission, but that will waste the day cycle, which is not a smart choice. The worst thing about the healing is that it's tied to Yuna. If she isn't with you, then you can't heal. Guess I gotta invoke my spider senses to sense an attack coming from behind the camera because there's basically zero indication that I'm gonna get shot from behind, giving me some Elden Ring flashbacks. Speaking about Yuna being with you, your party members will run around with you like headless chickens or just stand there as you go around and explore the city, getting your ass handled. You would think that this is easy prey for the monsters to attack them, but don't worry, apparently your glow stick of an arm is attracting the monsters attention because they are just dumb, but smart enough to use weapon and a shield to block attacks. Remember how I mentioned that it's impossible to get every ability because of the small amount of currency you get? Most people would think, ah, don't worry, I'll just play new game plus to carry my points over. Well, the dev didn't really think about that because there is no new scratch that. Just as I finished editing this video, the dev added new game plus to the review copy. So this part of the video got sent to the shadow realm. Just like how I waste my time playing gacha games every day. You gamers get to fully experience this dating game in its grand glory. I could too, but I got other games to play. In the end, is there anything great about the game? Uh, at least it functions, I guess. The art in the 2D scenes look really good. I wish they used more of that. The voice acting is done great. I played both in Japanese and English, with most of my time spent in Japanese. Both Japanese and English voice actors did pretty well. This game didn't take too long to complete, which can be good for people that don't have the time to play, but it's kind of bad because the last character felt rushed. It's a great job done for a small indie dev, but there's a lot of room needed for improvement.
Thank you again, Kepler Interactive, for giving me a chance to review the game. Hopefully, I didn't burn the game too much, but I had to be honest. I also feel like I should play more indie games so that I can get a good grasp on indie game quality because I feel like I might have been too harsh with this one. I've been spoiled by AAA games, alright? Sorry, guys. Thank you for anyone watching. Be sure to check out my other reviews, and I will see you guys later.